Good morning. Today I would like to show you the functioning of my biogas plant. So let's start from the input. We have fallen fruit, kitchen waste, silage from the garden. Silage is green stuff like grass clippings and leaves that I put in a plastic bag and seal the bag and wait for eight weeks for a fermentation to take place to break down the cellulose and then to make it available to the bacteria. I put the, the stuff into my mincer. This is a food processor mincer uh, which is found in sinks and it grinds the input to a, to a fine juice. Actually, I put water in with it too, water. And that comes into the pipe, the first pipe, which goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank and is cut here on an angle. So the matter comes in and then remains here for two to four weeks, maybe six weeks, I don't know yet exactly how long it takes, but here it is transformed into gas, into our biogas. For optimal performance, we need a temperature of at least 30 to 35 degrees. Celsius. So for this I have these heaters, aquarium heaters, I've got two of them which heat up the juice to that temperature. Here to keep the thing moving I have a stirring unit which is driven by a little electric motor which drives a shaft inside a pipe slowly 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 14 revolutions per minute to get the, the whole thing happening and that is uh, controlled by a clock which it's a timer which turns it on and off every hour for half an hour and this last pipe here is where we can then lead the effluent, the finished product, out into a bin which holds the juice, which is a fertilizer. And I haven't tried it yet, but it's said to be very good for the garden. Now, let's get to the gas. The gas is produced inside here by mesophilic bacteria, anaerobic, and they go out through the tube into my first washing unit here. They go with a pipe and then when the pipe is full it, it, it presses the bubbles out and the bubbles go up and I can see this is actually a visual uh, control for me to see what is happening in the tank. When there is bubbles it's good news. So the bubbles go up into my second uh, filter. Inside here we have iron shavings. that are used for uh, scrubbing in, in the kitchen, sort of iron pads. They are finely ground iron shavings that you used in, in the past, used a lot to clean the plate. So they are meant to take off the, uh, the sulfur out of the gas. And then the gas goes in here into my bladder, which are rubber boats. Now in summer, there were many people on the lake with rubber boats and because the summer is over, people get rid of their boats and I can get many of them 
rubber boats, very cheap inflatable rubber boats. And I've got now three stacked on top of each other and they get filled with gas. There is already a little bit of pressure in it, but not enough really to drive a good flame in my burner. So I thought I better get a little pump happening. So here we have a little pump. It's driven by 12 volts and is radio controlled from the house. So I can, I see my garage and I see that I need more on my tank here. So I, I turn on the pump with my little gizmo and then the pump starts pumping gas out of the tubes into my holding tank which in the film you see is that blue tank which is made of two tanks a big one and big one here and the smaller one and they are both cut off their tops and the smaller one gets into the big one which is filled with water and now for passive pressure I put a brick on top here and the brick presses down the little lids and gets me the good pressure I need in my hose to come up to the house to my burner and to make a nice flame and I got the nice burning happening up in the house. So I hope this explains more or less what is happening. I forgot to mention two things here. In this pipe also I have two units just for control. One is a pH, which uh, it's a pH um, meter, which I put in occasionally into here to gauge my pH, to give me a reading. Up to now I'm still around 7.05, 7.08, so I'm still above 7, which is very good, they say. They say if I put in too much uh, stuff, it gets acidic and then it could jeopardize the process. So I'm careful to not overload my digestive. Also, here is a temperature gauge, which all the time I gauge the temperature, which is essential for the process. And I've got this connected to a pad, an iPad, with an app, which gives me a reading for every day how the temperature was faring and uh, how, I my, how my performance is of the whole unit. So I hope that this is good news and perhaps I'm going to show you yet another video with the details, construction details of my biogas digester, homemade in Switzerland. Bye-bye.